Hey, what's going on, sports fans? This is Sean with Boxing Socialist and Other Sports. Here with my co-host, Ahmed. What's going on, Ahmed? How you doing today? Hey, what's going on, Sean? Busy weekend, man. Bu you know, busy sports weekend. Yes, yes, it is, man. Uh, NFL is coming down to, I think, the final final four, right? That's right. That's right. We got our NFC East team, or sorry, NFC conference teams and AFC conference teams. Final four. Yep. And then on top of that, man, um, we're both right here in Houston. Big shocker this week. Well, I ain't going to say it's a shocker. I think I was telling you and everybody around the world before the season started, um, actually towards the end of last year, when, matter of fact, when Russell Westbrook got traded, I said, oh, James Harden is going also, especially with the change in management. And then, boom, a mega deal, and they end up sending him to the Brooklyn Nets. And my question is, if all of y'all see the title, was James Harden being traded to the Brooklyn Nets a good move? What are your thoughts on that, Amit? Man, all right, Sean. Let me, I'm going to take a step back and take all the listeners uh, through this whole emotional roller coaster of James Harden and the Houston Rockets. <laughs> After the bubble, you know, everything that transpired, Daniel House, uh, you know, the whole issue with him in the, uh, in, in, you know, in the hotel room with, you know, somebody coming in there and then him getting you know, sent home. And then the way the Houston Rockets played that series versus the Lakers, uh, you know, they went down 4-1. But it seemed like after that, it kind of deflated the whole team, you know. Uh, yeah. The Rockets had come off a, a pretty rough seven-game series with Oklahoma City, an overachieving Oklahoma City team with uh, – Paul, former Houston Rocket. Um, it just so happened after the bubble. I think, I think, I think something in management had changed. I think D'Antoni was at the end of his four-year contract with the Rockets, and you know there was word, or, or you know there were talks before the season if 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 it didn't work out with at least an NBA Finals appearance, that you know they would probably part ways. And so I think everybody knew that um, Tillman Fertitta the Houston Rockets owner wasn't going to bring him back. And so I think, you know, that that was most likely going to happen. And then you had the the shocker, which I thought really made everything crumble, was Daryl Morey uh, deciding to come down. So, okay, now I've taken you, you know, that far. Once that had happened, I think it was a mindset of James Harden who had been – very successful under D'Antoni and under uh, Daryl Morey, who had you know brought him the players that he wanted here. Right. It was a totally new uh, head coach, GM. It looked like the Rockets were you know starting you know like starting new, and so I think him and Westbrook they created this little you know this you know this myth and this you know this you know things were going awry and you know we just want to get out i think they just wanted a fresh start and uh, to me looking back I, I think it's totally understandable i think they're both at a position in their careers where they you know they want a chance to play for championships so was i shocked you know the question you're asking am i shocked i'm not shocked i'm, I'm you know i'm not shocked james harden's gone um i just wish you know it had ended differently you know you know as they say breakups are hard and yeah. uh you know this was definitely one of those hard breakups it's tough seeing them in a Brooklyn uh, Nets uniform, but I think for both sides, um, it's the best thing. It, it's the best thing. And, you know, going forward, uh, Raphael Stone, the new GM of the uh, uh, Houston Rockets, I think he's got a vision. I think he's got a plan. And, uh, you know, they've got some talent on this current team, some young guys. They brought in Christian Wood, who, you know, has amazed, is probably the most improved player in the NBA so far this year. He's averaging a double-double. You know, the John Wall trade for Russell Westbrook. John Wall's got a lot to prove. And then, you know, they just traded for Victor Victor Oladipo. And so he's in the last year of a deal. And so, you know, they you know, they got some guys. They'll be they'll be playing for, you know, probably a lower seed in, in the uh playoffs, but they do have a chance. They're no longer considered a contender. But if you look at this team, James Harden gave him a, a great eight years, you know, and I know people are upset. But if you look at the big picture, the Rockets got to the Western Conference Finals twice. They right. were literally one game away, or maybe a Chris Paul hamstring away from advancing to the NBA Finals against a, maybe one of the greatest teams ever in in uh, the 2018 Golden State Warriors. So uh, the Rockets uh, accumulated four first-round picks, 
or uh, sorry, three first round picks, uh, four swaps, and uh, they got Victor Oladipo, they got uh, Dante Exum, and then they got, I think, one other European player, Kirkos. Um, yeah. And so, you know, we'll see where it goes from here. Um, I do expect the Rockets to still play better, and I, I expect them to try to play for the eighth, seventh, or eighth seed in the Western Conference. They can still do that with the, you know, with the squad. Um, then we'll see when trade deadline comes, whether they'll be buyers or sellers, you know, whether they'll be playing for this offseason, which will have some cap space, or they'll be playing for draft picks because they have a lot of them now. Now, you know, now it's time to rebuild. Right. And listen, so let's look at this from a monetary standpoint. So until this trade happened, Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, and Andrew Wiggins for the Golden State Warriors, they're averaging a hundred, almost $108 million a year. And my God, and who beat them by an extra seven million? James Harden, <laughs> Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, hundred and almost one hundred and fifteen million. Like, man, yeah. I, I mean, right now it's like all that money that you're spending, and Kyrie Irving is missing in action. Your thoughts? Where is Kyrie Irving? What is he doing? He he's been to find fifty thousand. He's not showing up. He's going to parties. He's doing some activist stuff. Why games are going on? Uh, what's going on with Kyrie Irving, and, and will this power I, I, I three telling, work? I, Sean, I was telling a friend the other day. I feel like this is the lowest um, Kyrie. This is the lowest value Kyrie Irving has had in his career. I mean, he's a great player, but he right. just, you know, you know him him doing all these antics on you know on the side, and you know when when he left Boston, I thought that, I was a little shocked about that because. You know, I thought that was a good situation for him. Uh, you know, his dad played at Boston uh, U, uh, and yeah. so he, you know, he had talked about how what you know Boston meant to him and his family and stuff like that. And um, you know, when they left, you know, a lot of the guys in Boston were happy. You know, they were like, you know, this guy was nothing but drama here. And so when right. he signed with the Nets, even last year, you know, he, you know, questions came up about him and you know missing games and you know disappearing and stuff. And actually, the Nets played a lot better without him. So. You know, I don't know where he is this year. I don't know where his mindset is. I, you know, I know he does a lot of things off the uh, off the court, but if you get Kyrie in, a, in in the proper mindset, this team could be dangerous. This team could be very good. I, I mean, the ceiling is the NBA championship. I I'm predicting they do kind of put this together and at least get to the NBA finals. But you know, Kyrie Irving, you know, that's a, it's, it's a big question mark. You know, I, I I don't know. That remains to be seen, Sean. I I, I don't know what to say. It it just where is Kyrie? I know you saw those memes. I know you yeah. saw those memes. Yeah. I, yeah. You know, they're everywhere. Hey, hey, listen, I knew things were going south. What was it about two years ago when Kyrie Irving said, I believe the earth is flat? Oh, you right see, there, there you go. Yeah. Right, yeah, right then and there, I said, okay, this guy, he just started talking. And then what was it a few months ago, Charles Barkley got him? He said, I'm an artist. I'm an artist out here. <laughs> and he's like, well, you shut up and joke, but you play basketball. That's you know right. what? I'm slowly seeing that. And I'm not saying – I'm not trying to down Kyrie, but I really think he has some kind of mental issues. You know, I think he I, he may, you know, and, and that's the thing. Uh, we You know, we don't know. If he does, then, you know, the Nets need to really get him some help. Uh, you know, we saw it. Like I said, we've seen this in Cleveland when he left Cleveland. He was in a great situation under LeBron or with LeBron. They had won a championship. And then right. we Boston – they actually got better when he got hurt. So, you know, he's you know he's been known to carry drama with him, and it's no you know no it, it's happening again this year. So, we'll see where this team goes. Uh, you know, he's still out there. He's still you know supposedly at a birthday party for his sister. Uh, he was you know supposed to be at practice. So I you know, you know they asked Steve Nash. Did you hear about that, Sean? They asked Steve Nash uh, if he was going to be available for the game and. Uh, Kyrie had said no, he he's not available, and that was news to Coach Nash. So yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I think they're trying to figure it out. They're trying to. Uh, I've I saw a couple of um, you know, just reading up on on the whole Kyrie situation. I saw a couple of ex NBA guys say that, hey man, maybe you should trade Kyrie for you know more depth on that team. You have Harden and KD, so you know why not trade Kyrie? And see what you can get because you know they gave up a lot in that trade for Harden, so um, yeah. you know, that's a possibility. That you know that's still out there. Trade deadline still uh, not till March, so 
But, you know, like I said, if Kyrie is mentally there and he's, you know, mentally involved, you know, that's a dangerous team. That's that's a so, real team. So, Ahmed, so what are the odds with the big three and with, with only um, Harden and Durant versus the defending champions, the Los Angeles Lakers? Do they need all three to beat the Lakers or can they just do it with KD and James Harden? You know, it's KD is he's an amazing player. Harden's an amazing player. I think it's going to take. You know, I I think with those three with, with these three guys, and if if Kyrie comes back, I think it's going to take some time. It's going to take some time. Some you know some chemistry. Uh, you know, they're going to have to find out you know what their team is about and how each other plays. Like uh, Harden's first game, he had nine turnovers. And, uh, you know, that's, you know, that's expected. He, you know, he doesn't know where teammates like the ball and, you know, how they want the ball. So, you know, he's trying to figure that out. And right now he's playing the point guard. So when Kyrie comes back, that's another added dimension. Um, so I, I think it's going to take a while. But I think there's – I mean, their ceiling is NBA championship. And now, when, when, you know, when you say NBA championship and you say, you know, who, who could they face? You know, you could say the Lakers. You could say the Clippers, maybe the Nuggets, if, if they can, you know, get their stuff together. But – Right now, if, if you're comparing the Lakers and, and the Nets, you know, I, I would still give the advantage to the Lakers because it's a LeBron team. You know, he just yeah. seems to always find ways, you know, to, you know, beat these, you know, beat these mega, you know, these these teams. Uh, I just feel like I just feel like the Lakers are a little bit better chemistry wise, you know, because of LeBron and AD and. AD is the X factor. LeBron's a great player, but AD is the X factor on the Lakers. He can guard multiple positions. LeBron can guard multiple positions. But when you have a guy that's skilled like AD, 6'10", 6'11", can block shots, can rebound, can score. I mean, just like KD on, on the Nets, you know, he's the X factor for them. But just having that guy who, you know, can do it all uh, in AD, who's a, who, you know, who's also a great defensive player. So I would I would give the edge to the Lakers slightly right now because they've been together. You know, they've you know, they've been through a playoffs. They've won uh the finals last year and they brought on a few guys this year in um uh, in Harrell who was the sixth man of the year last year with the Clippers and they brought on Dennis Schroeder who was second to sixth man of the year last year. So you bring yeah. in two guys that and you just plug them in, and, and it just seems like the Lakers have not lost a beat. Yeah, and they're still trying to figure it out. It's still early, but, but yet you, they're playing some really good basketball. I mean, you know what? Last year, and and I saw this early in the playoffs. Uh, it was kind of hard because of the whole COVID things. But when the playoffs really hit, I noticed right then and there. I said, Lakers have proved the reason why they were so dominant was that they actually went back to the 70s and 80s and early 90s, they went with the big men. You had LeBron James that, even though he's not a center, he's big and strong for his size. Yeah. You had AD, you had JaVale McGee, and you had Dwight Howard. You had all these guys at 6'11", 7 foot. They were and big. They just dominated. And everybody that tried to come inside basically got blocked almost every time. And John, they had to they force people to shoot. They had a, they had a, yeah, and they had to force people to shoot outside. Sean, they are better this year. I'm, I'm gonna tell you yeah. why. Because Gasol, he, he he's a big guy. He he may not be as athletic, but man, yeah. I sees the court. He can pass. He passes better than Javale McGee. He passes yeah. better than Dwight Howard. Yep. He's a former Defensive Player of the Year. Now he may not be yep. as fast or as athletic, but mm -hmm. he's smarter. He's smart. Right. He can pass. He can uh he can shoot the three pointer. I, right. I just feel like overall, what the Lakers are missing is. Uh, just time. They just they they just need more time together because they have they have four new guys on the team this year who are who are part of the rotation. So why uh, why did they give up Rondo? That was the most stupidest move in well, the world. No, I'm I'm, I'm going to tell you why. Rondo benefited from playing with this team, but to me, they got a guy who's a younger Rondo and Dennis Schroeder. Very similar game, very similar. Except Schroeder's a better outside shooter. And he's a little bit peskier defender because he's a little younger, you know. Rondo's a little older. And, you know, an another thing is I don't think the Lakers believe Rondo could have stayed healthy for another year. You know, he had some injury issues all, uh, most of the year. And as soon as the bubble started, I don't know if you remember, uh, he got hurt again. He broke his thumb. 
And so he he missed another month. So he he didn't come back till I think it was the end of the first round, if not the second round of the playoffs last year. But then when he came back, he was you know he he played well. He played real I, well. I, I thought they got rid of him. I thought personally, I was like, well, they got rid of him because his brother came to the bubble and almost started. No. Uh, what was that? Dame letter? He started yeah. a fight with somebody. I think it was, yeah, I think it was uh, one of the Blazers. Yeah. They, now, some, now, some, now you're talking about a top three. If, if, if this guy is a free agent and everything was perfect, I would definitely trade Kyrie Irving for uh, Dame Lillard to go over there with James Harden. Oh, man. I don't think nobody could stop them. Wow. Wow. You know, but, it, but Sean, here's the thing. Are the Blazers willing to do that? I, I would say no. What like yeah. if if you're the Blazers? I'll take uh, CJ McCollum. Well, yeah, no, but I'm saying if you're the Blazers, do you want to disgruntle Kyrie Irving? Yeah, Kyrie's just messing up for his whole career. I don't know. Yeah, what I mean, think about the other team. If I'm the Blazers, I'm like, I don't want that headache. You know, I don't want that headache in my you know in my house. I'm 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 we're fine. You know. Yeah. So I I just think his his value right now is at an all time low. You know, and um. I don't know if the Nets are, um, you know, I, I, you know, I don't know if internally they're thinking, you know, what did we do because they got KD with with Kyrie. You know, they both were able to get them to, you know, to both come and maybe they don't get KD if if Kyrie doesn't resign. So at least they have KD now. But now they got Harden, and so I feel like, um, do they need Kyrie? I don't think so. I think KD. I think KD and Harden is is good enough to win the Eastern Conference. Now, now, Ahmed, last question for you. Yeah. Will we get a shocker this year in the West Coast? Will Donovan Mitchell and the Utah Jazz shock everybody and make it all the way to the Western Conference Finals again? I would take the under on that, uh, Sean. I, I would I would say no. I would say no. I, I, I'm still skeptical on Donovan Mitchell. I'm, I, you know, I feel like he's a great player, and he got paid this offseason as he should have gotten paid. Uh, Rudy Gobert got paid, and – you know, that raised a lot of eyebrows. Uh, you know, I was like, ooh, I think Shaq commented on that. Did you see that? Where yeah, Shaq yeah, Rudy, yeah. You know, got $200 million and only averaging 13 points and 10 rebounds. Um, I, you know, I, f- I still feel like Donovan Mitchell, uh, even though he's improved over the last couple of years and, you know, carried his team, that team is missing an a, a additional player to take some pressure off of him, especially in the playoffs. And until they get that or until they find some more balanced scoring, I still feel like their ceiling is maybe the second round. You know, I I, I just don't see them getting past the second round. Uh, and even winning a playoff series is going to be challenging in the first round. You know, they last year they were matched up against the Nuggets and it went seven games, but, uh, you know, the Nuggets moved on. Um, you know, Nuggets are another team where I feel like, ah, man, as much as I, I, I like Joe Kick, uh, Murray is kind of off and on. He, you know, he still hasn't taken that next step. He showed last year in the playoffs. He had a, he had a phenomenal playoffs, and it got mm-hmm. conference finals. But if you look this year, he, he, you know, he struggled a little bit. You know, and that's what young guys do. So I can't really count on a lot of young guys, uh, especially with LeBron and AD in the West, All and right. they're so strong. It, I mean, the only team I see Sean right now, I'd yeah. say the Clippers have a shot. The Clippers. Clippers okay. have Man, you have, they were a big disappointment last year. Oh, they were huge, huge disappointment. But I feel like they have the character and, and, and the type of players that it would take to beat a LeBron and AD with uh, with Kawhi and uh, Paul George. Well, well, that's the thing. The reason why they lost, everybody kept calling him Pandemic P. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, were you calling him, Sean, were you calling him Pandemic P? Come after, on. I heard, after I heard everybody else calling him Pandemic P. Yeah, uh, man. He's, oh, yeah, yeah. He's he's horrible. He was horrible last. Year. I don't know what happened, man. <laughs> yeah, he was terrible. He's actually played pretty well this year. Uh, he, he, you know, he's maybe he's trying to prove people wrong, but you know what they say. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, we'll have to wait and see till playoff time. But I, the only thing is, I think the Clippers have the best shot. Uh, I don't see Denver. Um, you know, Murray had a great playoffs last year. He's been inconsistent this year. Joe King has been an MVP type of uh, player, but then I don't know of anybody else on that team who can step up and, you know, help them uh, in the playoffs. And then you have guys like, you know, the Mavericks, the Jazz, um, 
you know, I, I just don't feel like they're ready yet, you know, young, right. younger players to compete with, uh, you know, the Lakers. So unless there's any injury to LeBron or AD, um, I would say the Lakers are probably going to uh, represent the Western Conference again. Yeah, 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 more than likely. All right, man, I, I yeah. appreciate your time. Once again, um, sports fans, we enjoy y'all being on here with us. Um, listen, get used to this at least a couple of times a week. Me and Ahmed will hopefully get on here, man. We can discuss sports. Um, listen, if you have any, you know, um, questions, comments, anything you want us to talk about, just leave it down in the um, description down below on our YouTube channel. And Ahmed, once again, pleasure being with you. Thank and you, sir. Thank you. Out. Definitely. Take care, Sean. All right.